Good afternoon. It is Tuesday, January 24th. Skipped yesterday. I got to play D&D with my buddies. It's been a few weeks, but that was fun. Um, I think I slept alright, but uh, I just got off work, and I am already very tired. Much earlier than I ought to be. Oh well. Um... I'm a press through. I want to watch a movie. It's movie day. Tuesday's the day to watch movies, so I want to do that. But not one of those. You should know what I want to watch. I've been talking about it for ages. It's what I've been wanting to get into for, for quite a bit. It's in here. It's one of these movies I haven't... Well, technically I've seen the movie. I saw the movie in theaters. Um, which is weird. I'm going to pull out... The Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 2 box, at long last. And Phase 2 begins with the movie Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3 was actually the first of the Iron Man movies that I watched. Um, it's probably normal, right? It's, I'm sure that's where people usually begin. The other end of it. That's the last one in this phase. There we go. So yeah. Iron Man 3. Which is the Mandalorian plot. Um, it's got a lot of cool stuff with Pepper. It was in you know instrumental in me deciding that Pepper Potts is like awesome character. Um, if I remember correctly. I feel like it ends with him destroying all of his suits, but he still has a bunch of suits moving forward. That's my memory of it, was was like it ended and I was like, oh no, he's like got rid of all those suits. What's he gonna do moving forward? Oh, still just have all the suits. Whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's exciting. Yeah, I've seen this one. This isn't the most exciting of the ones in this, in this series, because there's... We get into some stuff in Phase 2 that I've not seen and that, that I know little about and it's way out there and all that. Oh, man. But, um, but we will begin by hopping into Iron Man 3. And I would give Iron Man 3 a 7.4 out of 10. Not, per not bad. Not bad. You know, not... Not the greatest of the Iron Man films by any means, but you know. Uh, first, just some interesting uh, observations. It's a Christmas movie. It's a movie set during Christmas. Um, I had another one. What was my other interesting observation? Oh yes, right at the very end there, at the end of the credits. It says, Tony Stark will return, which is particularly interesting to me, right at this point, having just finished James Bond, is that's where they always end. James Bond will return. So I, I just, I liked that they did that. That was, that was fun. Because um, yeah, he's that kind of character. Uh, anyways. <clears throat> um, of course, no back of box description, so from Wikipedia. Tony Stark faces a powerful enemy, the Mandarin, who attacks and destroys his mansion. Left to his own devices and battling post-traumatic stress disorder, Stark struggles to get to the bottom of a series of mysterious explosions. It's very vague in the kind of description that doesn't give anything away. Um, this is the, uh, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe's version of the Extremis, I think it's pronounced, storyline. Um... Which I know of from some of the behind the scene features of one of the other previous movies uh, where it talks about it. And, and the main thing it talks about is, of course, that he has, I guess, is it briefcase or nanobot or whatever, the, the suit. And this one all features a lot of that suit flying to him, portable suit thing. That's, it's cool. But this is a story that is, I don't know. Doctors and scientists that go astray and they 
are working on developing this, basically, super serum again. Only this one in, uh, is gives uh, super healing, super strength, and fire powers. Like, like getting really hot to melt things, but at one in one specific scene, breathing fire. Which makes it more silly that they do it just that one time. Almost for a laugh. Whatever. Anyways, it's this whole thing with the Mandarin. And they use the logo, the Ten Rings. Anyways, the Mandarin. And he's this terrorist who hates America. Blah, blah, blah. We go through... There are these attacks, they're bombs, but they can't find any of, like, the evidence of a bomb having gone off. But there's an explosion, so... And there are these terrorist attacks by this Mandarin fellow that's putting out these videos, like, you know, capturing the airwaves and forcing people to see his threats of terror. <sighs> Tony's buddy. His, his former bodyguard that had to stop being his bodyguard because he can't be the bodyguard to Iron Man, you get laughed at. Happy Hogan. He ends up as a victim um, and hospitalized from one of these these bombs. Now, t now it's personal. Tony gets mad. He threatens the guy. He gives him the address where he now lives with Pepper. And of course, they <laughs> come and blow up his house. Um, he was looking into some stuff with it, and the flight path on his suit, as Jarvis is kind of messed up. From being hit with all of the bombs. Uh, takes him to Tennessee. And he's stranded and his suit is down. And so we have quite a bit of time with Tony without his suit. From doing investigative research. To building like house made. Like not an armor suit. But like gadgets to infiltrate a base with. Whereby he, he infiltrates um, the base where Jarvis was eventually able to track down the signal is coming from in Miami. This terrorist isn't even from Middle East or wherever they're expecting. He's broadcasting out of Miami. And we find out that the Mandarin is an actor, like a like a drug-addled, insane guy who was played to play this role by a guy that's both part of Pepper and Tony's past who is really behind it. He's pulling the strings. He's the one doing, you know, um, developing, advancing this extremist um, virus, basically. Anyways, um, this guy gets a hold of Pepper to, to hold Ransom because he wants Tony's help with, with the virus. Um, with figuring out a cure, I guess with the idea of being able to infect someone, use its healing to like regrow limbs and then cure them and so they no longer have the risk of it blowing them up. Because all these bombs have been people that have had this virus being sent to a spot and they explode and there's no sign of an explosive device because it's one of the victims. And it's just this virus exploding out of them in incredible heat. Anyways, we're figuring out what's going on. Tony's suit back at the, the barn of some kid in Tennessee finally finishes recharging and it flies to him from Tennessee to, to Florida and uh, launches onto him and he's able to break out of his captivity. Partners up with um, War Machine. Sorry, it's now Iron Patriot. That's has a better sound to it, not so violent. <laughs> um, and they go off, and they're, they're they got to save the president because they're after the president, and they got to save Pepper Potts. So <sighs> the uh, excavation crew at Tony's mansion has finally uncovered the vault. Where Tony, who has been dealing with PTSD from the Avengers, from going into outer space, from battling the aliens, like, it is messing him up. 
there are multiple times where he just has like a panic attack. Well, he hasn't been able to sleep. So instead, he's been building Iron Man suits. Many, many, many Iron Man suits. And they can all come out on their own. They don't have to be manned. So they all fly out and they battle with this army of extremist people on this old oil tanker where they have the president strung up because they're going to use him uh, as an example in these terrorist videos from the, the Mandarin. Who, again... Mandarin is this, like, drug-addled actor who doesn't even really seem aware that there's a reality going on. He thinks he's there's some role that he's playing. And he's just kept happy with women and drugs, and he doesn't go out, and he doesn't see that, you know, it's not like some sort of fiction that he's being used as the puppet for the real terrorist attacks. But they're using him for this, and they have the, the president strung up, and... Pepper Potts is held in captivity, you know, suffering from this virus, and uh, battle goes on between Tony and this guy, this scientist dude that's heading up all the, the terror. Pepper falls, like, hundreds of feet. Tony's gonna catch her, and he fails, and she falls into the fire. And that gets Tony mad, and so he's fighting the dude, and he's battling him a lot, and eventually he, um, after, after wearing him down a little bit, he ends up with his, one of his suits latching onto that guy instead of him, and then telling Jarvis to explode that suit. It blows up, Tony gets down to the ground, and, like, from the fire of this guy, like, he comes out charred and, and whatnot, but he's still he's still going and he's after Tony and then slam pepper also infected with the virus is super fired super healing and super strong and so she kicks butt and so she defeats the bad guy um again i saw i saw this movie before i saw the other iron man movies so that this might be part of the reason why long term like pepper is like a character that I've loved. Um, so she's very cool. Um, saves the day. Tony thanks her by blowing up the excess suits. <sighs> Although apparently not all of them, because he has plenty of them next time he shows up. He just blew up the, the spare prototype so he can keep building, I guess. I don't know. Then, um... He blows those up. And then he talks about, you know, that he, um, he got her cured. Which I guess means she has no effects of extremists. But they're not specific. And I, I'm like, I, I don't remember from next time she shows up. Hmm. And, uh. And not only that, but he bothers to go through the surgery while he's at it to get the shrapnel removed from his chest. So he no longer needs that magnet. Which is also the thing that's powering all his suits built into him in order to not die. Which, a lot of it, like, I, my memory of it was it just, it felt like the end of Iron Man. Iron Man suits blown up. Power source for Iron Man suits taken out. Tony settling down. It just, it felt like the end. Which is maybe why they decided to end it with Tony Stark will return. To let you know, it's not really the end. But he does, um, you know, pull away a few of the, the gadgets from his, the rubble of his house during the end. Uh, during, like, the last moments in the movie. And then the, the post credits scene explains why... Various parts of this movie are narrated by Tony, which I, I don't particularly like. Especially, like, right at the beginning, where it tells you... Where, where it very much is, like, him talking as if he's talking from the end of this. He's telling this story to you. Which is a great way to remove all sense of Jeopardy. Well, he makes it through, because at the end, he tells us about it. But uh, the post credit scenes is that he's talking with, with Bruce Banner, 
um, treating him like a therapist and Bruce is falling asleep because he's not that kind of doctor. <laughs> I mean, it was fun. It was interesting. Um, cool scenes. Cool to have Tony dealing with a kid when he's stuck out there with nothing to rely on. and Just the, the kid that'll try and help. But, uh, above all, it's it's an okay movie, but above all, I am glad to be finally entering phase two. Because I've seen this movie. I haven't seen Dark World or Winter Soldier. Oh man, that deals with the whole thing with Bucky. He fell in that movie. I don't know what happened. That's going to be interesting. Guardians of the Galaxy, like I've seen them in like some of the Avengers movies, but like... I, I don't know. They're like... Aliens and such. I've seen Age of Ultron. Because uh, I watched the Avengers movies uh, as the Marvel Cinematic Universe was going through theaters. Ant-Man I've never seen. I don't really know anything about that character other than his involvement in the other Avengers films. So yeah, no, it's fun. Back into it. Back into some Marvel. <sighs> awesome. I'm going to call it a night because I was kind of tired, get, you know, starting the movie and I've watched a movie for a couple hours. So I'm very tired now. Thank you for joining me. Join me as my journey continues.